How's it going, guys? We're going to go straight into Alejandra. Alejandra. Um, her gear review by Gear Masters. Um, amazing bass player. I really love her tone. It's nice. I love her bass as well, which is really cool. A few of you guys commented on that. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get straight into it. Um, thanks for supporting me and not killing me, warning fans. I love you all. So here we go. Mm -mm -mm. Hi, my name is Alejandra Villarreal and I am the bass player of the band The Warning. Um, our new that. single, More, Such just cool came out, song. so go check it out. And I am going to be talking about my bass today. This is my bass. This is a custom USA bass. It's an NS5 XL. I am wow. a Spectre artist. I designed this bass with them. Everything from the wood and the, um, the material, the color, everything. Every step we did it together to the inlays, which is the, um, this is our logo. So everything, everything we did together. And I really love it. Um, we did special wood in the back. It's I think it's red wood to make the bass lighter because most of their bases are extremely heavy. And, and so I just wanted to make it a bit lighter, but it's still it's still great wood for the sound I of the, the bass. And I feel like it's just perfect for everything we do with the band. So, so yes, I love it. I started using a five string bass like maybe three years ago now, four years. And I quite love it. A fan actually gifted me a Spectre bass, a four string Spectre bass, um, like five years ago maybe. And since then I've loved Spectre. So with the difference between a four string bass and a five string is you get that extra sort of low string. So yeah, I think it's normally tuned to a B or a C depending on what you're doing. Um, yeah, I mean, you can tune it, tune it to anything really, but just gives you like more low end and more options um awesome awesome i love the color on it i love that sort of flamey flame top kind of kind of thing going specter i mean i've heard of them but i've never really yeah i've never seen one really like that so that's awesome love a vibe too she's cool and and i'm really proud to now own a custom base you can actually get this design which is called alice inferno in the specter website and i also we just released a signature model, which is my model. It's a four string bass. And it was inspired by this original bass that we designed with Spectre. So, so yeah, and it also has my signature in the back, which is Ooh. awesome. I love it. And the last thing that we just added to this bass are lights. Yes. And like so it. this is, it. it looks really cool, but it's also really helpful for when we play live. And you know the lights are all over the place. It's just so I can go back and I know where I'm playing. So these pickups are EMGX pickups. I have well, two normal knobs and a stack. I think knob. That's how they're called. Um, and this is regular volume. This is the blend for the pickups. This side is mostly this pickup. I use it in the middle. And these are the basic cue. These are the high ends. I use it almost all the way up. Not. Not all the way up though. I use it in standard tuning, so it's B, E, A, D, G. I standard tuning all the way. The strings I use the Dario strings. I use the NYXL 45 to 130, and I I love them. They sound pretty good. Uh, they last a really long time, and they're not too bright. They're not too flat, I guess. But yeah, I love these strings. I don't have to change them out as often. And this is my awesome. pedal board. Uh, just that on strings i think it, it depends on your sort of preference i mean when i was playing i just used to between every at every new show i'd probably have a set of strings on um just because they sound so like they're designed to sound like that if you know what i mean it's that new fresh kind of creation um but i then wouldn't change them for ages but then you do really notice that sort of brightness that gets lost um Anyway, love that bass. Let's see what she's got here. Ooh, the Aguila. Um, I don't use that many pedals, but this is a nice. preamp. I love this preamp so much. I actually used it. It was one of the first pedals I got, I ever got. And then I stopped using it 
And then I was like, I miss this pedal. And it's such a good uh, preamp. Really, this is how I control most of the sound that goes out when we play live. I really like the bass. To really cut through, since we're a, a trio, um, we feel like the bass is really important. So we really want to have a bottom end. But this also really helps us um, define well what I'm playing. Because sometimes you really can't hear what the bass is playing. You can only feel it. I mostly only use the Engage. I don't use the AGS. Um, but this is the gain volume. I, it's not the volume, the gain. Um, <laughs> and I really just use it up half, treble, half. Everything is mostly in the half position, um, bass, not too much, not too little, mid frequencies, mid levels, they're all just halfway there. With the mix of See, I did notice when we were watching the videos live, her bass does cut through a lot, which is really cool. And you can hear her little little fills she does, like I've noticed that, which is awesome. Got a lot of time for that. I just love bass. I love bass. I wish I was a bass player, to be honest. I really do. I love it. My bass would growl. So this and my bass, it's really easy to be able to, you can, to be able to hear what I'm playing correctly without losing that bottom end. So I feel like that's really important to me. And this really helps me do that. <clears throat> as well as this other pedal, which is a dark glass microtubes. I love, dark glass love this bass overdrive. It's so good. I've also tried a lot of overdrives over the past few years. And this one is really cool because it's really easy to blend the, the overdrive, like the distortion sound, as much as you can or as little as you want it to. So it's not really overpowering and you can still hear what I'm playing. Like, as I said, like you can hear the bass lines without becoming just like this mess of like distortion. This is the overdrive. I usually leave it all the way up and I mix as much of it as I want and here this is the blend between your normal bass sound and the distortion I usually keep it almost halfway there as everything <laughs> so yeah here you just blend it as much as you want and it's really nice because you can still hear the original sound of the bass just with a bit of distortion on it so it's amazing I quite love it this is my lovely tuner. You can't have a pedal board without a tuner. It's really important need a tuner, to me, and it guys. also serves as a mute button. It's just muted, and it's really nice as well because even while I'm playing, I can see the tuner move around. So if I'm ever like mid song and I have no idea if I'm tuned well, I can play a note and it'll tell me if. I'm and uh, if you don't already know, like temperature really affects like tunings. Um, so yeah, like I know a lot of the stadium show people, you know, bands who do stadiums uh, have a lot of issues with that because um, temperatures are really bad, really bad, especially if you go from hot to cold because it stretches things. Um, but also talking about like these, you know, small boards and stuff and the Kemper and stuff, I think uh, Metallica have now gone either to XFX, uh, Axe or Kemper just to keep that steadiness of the same sound. I mean, so I get it. I do get it. It's not my thing, but I get it. <laughs> anyway, I just, I, I love being controversial, guys. I'm tuned or not, so yeah, it's just my tuner. This is the switch between my wireless so I can use it. Normally, this is for the wireless, and the wireless is at the bottom. So it's nice. packed in here. So yeah, this is just so to you activate can take that on the this is what I use for live shows. I don't have this Ooh, actually Mesa, at home, but this is what we use for live shows. This is an Ampic cab. This is an 8x10, and it's just that classic Ampic sound, which I love. And this is a Mesa amp. Um, it is mic'd and all, but we mostly use this for on stage and for like the people in front, so you can really... So yeah, you can bass with bass. Normally they do two things. Um, you go straight into a DI, which goes to front of house, and then you have a mic as well. Now, what the front of house engineer will do, he will mix a mixture of two of them together. Um, and as she's rightly saying there, it's for the crowd as well. Like, And that's why I'm really, I love amps on stage, because when you're, I don't know, say in the first few rows, maybe to 10 rows back, you can really hear that air being moved. And I love that. 
I love it. A lot of bands these days are just they they're ampless. Like the amp will be in an isolator cabinet somewhere in the I don't know, in the in the truck out back or something and just mic'd up and yeah, well I'll st- I, I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to go for the cleanest tone possible, but for me it loses that rawness and that like kind of punky we're a band, do you know? Like have some amps on stage, move some air. Like I'm all about that. Um, but I also see the other side of things as well. So yeah. Feel the bass. Yeah. I love this. It's honestly such a help when when we're on stage because sometimes you can't really feel the energy that the crowd feels. Like you, you can't feel it on stage. And the amps like really help us to feel the bass. So Good. mostly I just love it to have like a lot of bottom end so I can feel and listen my bass on the outside as well. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out our new music and go to thewarningbank.com for any other information you want to know about us. And yeah, thank you. That was epic. Yeah, love these guys' personality. Like, and when I say guys, I mean girls. It's just figure speech. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they're great. I think they're so genuine and down to earth and they know what they're on about. Do you know what I mean? And and it's cool because like, yeah, they're saying what I'm thinking, if you know what I mean. They're saying about the movement of air. They want to feel their music on stage because um, there's no worse feeling than getting on stage. And then because you're behind the PA, you're not really getting anything. You're just getting your in-ear monitors and like you're not feeling anything. And a lot of drummers these days have actual on their seats. They've got um, like sort of triggers that trigger a, a little thud because if drummers were used to back in the day when they used to have the uh the monitors right sort of to their ear it was so loud and then everything went to in-ear monitors and they couldn't hear the bass anymore they couldn't hear the kick drum um it's the same with bass players and guitarists you can have bass mats um where you stand on and you can feel the bass it's really cool how they all work and stuff so yeah it's really interesting they're they're awesome i love them and they're hopefully we're going to meet them um in birmingham that's the plan if we can get our time off but uh, we're definitely going to the lead show um but yeah no this has been really informative now next video i'm on to the drummer on to the next thank you guys thanks for all the love